For months, mosques worldwide took a series of measures to curb the spread of coronavirus. Many closed their doors completely and others banned congregations and used their speakers to remind people to stay at home. For centuries, the Umrah, the Islamic pilgrimage to Mecca, the holiest city for Muslims, has been a changeless feature of life in the Arab world. In war or peace, prosperity or famine, for millions of people, the same rhythmic chant echoes across cities and towns five times each day. But worshippers were not allowed to enter Makkah's grand mosques since the Saudi authorities suspended prayers on March 19 in an effort to combat the spread of the virus. Younger Saudis cannot recall ever seeing it so empty. Older ones draw a parallel with 1979 when the mosque was seized by extremists and besieged for two weeks. Now Makkah has slowly stirred from the seven-month hibernation as pilgrims trickle in after Saudi authorities partially lifted a coronavirus ban on performing Umrah. Thousands of worshippers entered the Grand Mosque in the holy city of Mecca in batches to perform the ritual of circling the sacred Kaaba, a cubic structure towards which Muslims around the world pray. Worshippers are no longer allowed to touch the Kaaba, but some enjoyed a respite from the usual crowding. This is an indescribable feeling. This is a gift from God, and thanks to His will, we have made it to the Umrah. And it seems like the other countries of West Asia are following suit. Thousands of Shiite pilgrims thronged the streets of Karbala and filled the shrine of Imam Hussein as the Arba'een pilgrimage reached its final day. Arba'een marks the end of the 40-day mourning period for the 7th century killing of Imam Hussein, Prophet Muhammad's grandson. It is one of the biggest religious gatherings in the world. In 2019, an estimated 14 million Shiite pilgrims flooded Iraq to attend Arba'in, including about 2 million from neighboring Iran. This year, however, only 1,500 pilgrims per country are being allowed to fly into Iraq, while Iran has been authorized to send an additional 2,500 overland. Volunteers have erected food stands to provide millions of pilgrims with free food and drinks all day long during the Arba'in festival. We are currently serving three meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner to the pilgrims of the Arba'in of Imam Hussein. Peace be upon him. We are committed to all the health rules. Some volunteers provided free masks, but few pilgrims wear them despite constant appeals made by the authorities for wearing masks and social distancing, which has been widely ignored during the festival. The scenes are a little different down south in Israel. The priestly blessing prayers at the Western Wall in Jerusalem during the Sukkot holiday look different this year due to a nationwide lockdown. Jewish worshippers prayed in fenced-off enclosures to limit contact, and only those living within 1,000 meters of the holy site were allowed to attend. <laughs> The traditional blessing is usually attended by tens of thousands of worshippers, but Israel is grappling with one of the worst outbreaks in the world on a per capita basis. One might wonder why, despite rising cases of COVID-19, these West Asian countries have reopened for the pilgrimage. 
For countries like Saudi Arabia, the pilgrimage is the backbone for expanding tourism. These countries have been trying to diversify the economy from being simply top oil exporters to also a tourist attraction which requires them to boost the number of visitors. But these plans have certainly been disrupted by the coronavirus. West Asia Bureau Report, Vion, World is One.